I am a little fearful that she just blurted that out. I'll be honest. Dude, the Beyonce, the Beyonce release was so clutch. Like I'm, you know, it, it's just, it goes way too hard. The freedom song, it really does. Like Kamala Harris kind of Loki doesn't deserve that level of hype. You know what I mean? Rachel Scott is tracking the race from Washington. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, George, good morning to you. This is an entirely different campaign. One week out from the Democratic National Convention and a new poll shows that Vice President Kamala Harris is gaining traction in those critical battleground states. All of that really not sitting well with former President Donald Trump, who has resorted to pushing conspiracy theories about the crowd size at her rallies and questioning her racial identity. This morning, Vice President Kamala Harris gaining momentum in the race for the White House. Another thing that I did not like, uh, and I brought this up already, was like Kamala Harris uh, doing the classic Dem thing, I guess, but in a new, like a new format where she looked at like something that Trump had suggested that is like a pro corporate policy and not a pro worker policy that masquerades as a pro worker policy, no tax on tips. And I think that ProPublica senior editor Jesse Isinger is absolutely right on this where he says no tax on tips policy is an ominous sign. Pandering matches half-baked bald Trump pander. Regressive. Most tip workers don't pay income tax and get EITC. Unfair. Why should a bus driver pay taxes but not a waiter? Relieves pressure on corporations to raise wages. That is a key part of this that I have an issue with. Uh, reasons is ominous. Suggests Harris doesn't have a serious economic policy circle that can respond to idiotic Trump blather suggests she doesn't have good enough political instincts slash communication skills to explain why doing the thing that sounds good isn't actually good. I am a little fearful that she just blurted that out. I'll be honest, but it played in Nevada. Brother, what are you talking about? She's in front of the culinary union. You know, the culinary union already has a policy in place that they are advocating for. It's called abolishing sub minimum wage. That's it. You don't have one guy on your team in your immediate orbit that could have communicated that to you. The union workers there already have a policy that they are advocating for. It is the abolition of sub minimum wage. Americans on the consumer front hate the tipping culture, right? And there is a nefarious reason as to why tipping culture is bad for the workers as well. And a lot of people, I think, uh, don't realize that it is a very effective, I would say, uh, cowardly way to make it seem like you are trying to uh, appear pro worker while simultaneously not appearing pro worker at all or being pro corporate. The biggest problem for service workers right now is the reality that they have to rely on the gratuitous nature of the customer in order to survive. And the way in which the, the tipping structure is designed in the United States of America allows corporations, allows restaurants to offer what is known as sub minimum wage because the tips make up for it, right? As in you get paid sub minimum wage at like $2 and 35 cents an hour. And then the rest of it is being made up with tips anyway. So the, your bosses, the restaurant doesn't have to give you like an honest, uh, uh, livable wage. They don't have to, they don't have to offer you an honest livable wage. It's crazy. Many tip workers like Tiz because they can get like 500 a night. Not all, but many. No, I understand that. I, I do. I, I get it. I know why it comes across as a popular policy. I know. Here's the statement by the Culinary Union Secretary Treasurer Ted Papa George regarding elimination of the sub-minimum wage and taxes on tips. The Culinary Union calls Nevada elected officials to support the federal ban on sub-minimum wages and taxes on tips. Nevada stands as a model where workers receive a fair minimum wage without relying on customer tips to cover wages. Currently, 34 states maintain minimum wages above the federal standard of 725, but tipped employees in many states can still earn as little as 213 per hour. According to B BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, approximately 1.1 million workers in the United States can earn below or below the federal minimum wage of 725 per hour. In Massachusetts, the tip minimum wage is 675 an hour, while the state minimum wage is $15 an hour. A lot of you who have not worked on this um worked in the service sector, I think, are kind of oblivious to how unimaginably cruel the sub-minimum wage structure works. But it is, regardless of what people think in the short term, 
I think it's a very nefarious uh, policy to design. The no tax on tips aspect of it is very nefarious policy making in the sense that like it basically moves the the blame away from those who are most responsible for people suffering, like most responsible for their workers not getting the honest wages that they deserve, livable wages that they deserve unconditionally and uh, changing the dynamic by by basically beefing up tipping culture which consumers across the board hate as well but a lot of people don't think about that immediately where they don't think about like oh well they're they have taken off taxes on on tips like most people don't think about it in the short term most people don't think about what kind of of incentives you are creating here and what that might look like down the line okay no tax on tips proposal is a bad idea on the merits, but I don't mind pandering to win the election. Please don't pass the Senate Dems, but this is an opportunity to pander with good policy. Take it. Rumors on economic Twitter is Harris policy will include raising all forms of minimum wage, including the sub wage. Several hope she does exactly what the culinary union wants from, from it like she did for the taxes on tips. Yeah. Prices will go up. Suggested tips will go down. It will get votes, but crap policy. Servers already don't claim our tips anyway, so what does this change? Can you elaborate? Can you please give us examples for us restaurant workers? I think what is beneficial for restaurant workers across the board isn't necessarily to cut taxes on, on tips, but instead to move to a model that makes it so that restaurants have to give you an actual wage rather than having you rely on the magnanimous, gracious nature of the customer. Then you have the present brain on the other side. It's hugely expensive and economically distortionary. So much that I highly doubt it will ever become law, which also makes this promise uh, less likely. No, I don't think this is peasant brain. I, I, I will, I'll be honest with you. I think this is one of the only instances where globe Twitter is right. One of the things that Americans are so f warped on is like taxes for middle income Americans. Taxes for middle income Americans basically fund the entire government because there's so many f people in that bracket. It's basically the entire nation that's in that bracket. So no. I am not anti-taxing the middle class. And obviously you can't say that in America if you're running. Um, you certainly try to avoid talking about that at, any, uh, at every point, but they're not wrong. When he says it's hugely expensive and economically distortionary, what this person is saying is not entirely incorrect. What this person is talking about is uh, funding the government. Like you're, you're basically taking away like a massive chunk of, of taxable revenue uh, from the government coffers. And I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing. I think that the way that the middle class is currently taxed is, is decent enough, but you know, the way that we spend is, is completely out of whack. People should be able to get more social safety nets for the taxes that they're paying currently. And then there are obviously plenty of areas where people are not taxed at all, especially if you're, or not taxed appropriately, especially if you're uh, entire net worth is in the stock market or on assets that are taxed at a lesser percentage than the regular straight income tax brackets work. And most of the super wealthy operate on that boundary. That's why we have people like you. You can afford to tip 100% each time. I know, but nobody does that shit. And you cannot rely on, like, I've always been the type of person who says, like, you're never going to extract concessions uh, by being nice, okay? Okay. You can't just expect people to be nice to you. You have to forcibly change the, the rules and the laws, okay? It is a foolhardy endeavor to rely on the magnanimous nature of the wealthy. If they were magnanimous to begin with, we wouldn't have such severe income inequality. We would not have billionaires, okay? They clearly are not. I don't think it's, like, appropriate to design an economy on, on having the entirety of the service sector be over-reliant on people being gracious and, and basically seeing, uh, basically seeing the, the working poor at the whims of their mercy, like basically creating a GoFundMe like structure for every interaction in the service economy is insane to me. And that is basically what we're doing with moves like this, like give people consistent, honest income that they deserve a livable wage. You are talking like the pubs have empathy, Lamau. No, I'm saying that nobody has empathy. Everyone is very selfish, which is why you have to design a structure that leads to more egalitarian outcomes because no one is going to do that. Also, the culinary union uh, saying that they want no taxes on tips is one thing. The culinary union leadership and many union leadership 
can oftentimes uh, push for policy that is not inherently uh, good, that is not ultimately a good policy, okay? This is something that you learn with, uh, you know, throughout your time uh, dealing with unions in general. If you remember, uh, sometimes there's also a mismatch in what a union communicates and what the desires of the rank and file are. Culinary Union is a great example of this. But this is one of those issues where the rank and file probably also, in short-term thinking, assume that this is a good idea. Technically not a good idea. It's one of those things that it is populist to say no taxes on tips, okay? But if you're looking at it with, uh, with the lens of, you know, uh, being an adult about it, it's not necessarily a solid idea at all. If you're going to use the populist aspect of this, you have to also, at the very least, tie it to uh, an increase in sub-minimum wage. Does that make sense? So do nothing? Is that, did I ever say so do nothing? I actually told you what to do instead. Why don't they go further and ban or increase sub-minimum wage? No, that's what I'm saying. They should. If they, let's say, want to keep that um, sub-minimum wage part of the equation afloat, they tack it on with like this populist policy. Are you arguing that relying on tips to support the service sector is unsustainable and unfair, effectively turning every transaction into a form of charity? Yes, that is precisely what I said. That, like, that's literally what I said. Wouldn't it be more to just to ensure workers receive a stable, livable wage instead of depending on the generosity of others? Yes, you, you understood exactly what I was saying. <laughs> Are you suggesting that the tax burden on middle-income in Americans is disproportionately high and that their contributions are essentially funding the entire nation? That is also what I said. Holy shit, this guy's awesome. Thank you for summarizing my points. The reason why uh, sub-minimum wage is devastating is because there's plenty of people who are also broke and when they're broke they also are you know for a multitude of different reasons refusing to pay tips okay so then the person in front of you is suffering as a consequence of that they just served you for like an hour and they got nothing in return and now they made two dollars in that process like that's insane relying on customers to keep the business afloat to keep the 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 lives of these servers uh sustainable is craziness.